Hello, everyone. Uh, today, we're happy to have another webinar, uh, this time with some information about the Startup Visa program. My name is Miriam Lazarte. I'm the CEO of LATAM Startups. And LATAM Startups is one of the designated incubator accelerators by the uh, Canadian government for the Startup Visa program. Uh, thank you for joining us today. So please notice uh, that our community manager, Perla Campos, will be monitoring uh, your questions or your comments in the chat box. Uh, she will also mute your microphone during this presentation. Um, if you have some other questions or comments, you can also send us a note uh, either in uh, English, Spanish, or Portuguese. Uh, so we are here to help you to answer any questions that you have. We actually got some pre-questions before, <laughs> so we will be sharing those uh, uh, during the webinar. So we uh, intend to answer all your questions through uh, this session. And, um, you know, uh, we've been, um, we, we received between uh, five or four or five daily emails with inquiries about the Startup Visa program. So in order to manage best communications with people, uh, interested in the program, we are providing all uh, relevant information in here. Uh, important for you to uh, notice that uh, we don't evaluate cases through emails or phone calls. Uh, people that believe they have a case to present to apply uh, in our website you can apply to our website uh, for the next cohort. Uh, we evaluate all applications and normally uh, we give feedback to all of them. Either they have a potential to enter to the program or not. Uh, please consider that we also receive a number of applications, uh, sometimes with uh, you know incomplete information or not, um, not all, you know, uh, truthful information in the application. So um, in case you don't have a complete, uh, you know, application, we cannot respond on that, just, uh, just to let you know. Um, before you apply, uh, please evaluate the criteria uh, to enter to the program. This criteria is uh, well explained in this link here. Uh, you know, Latam Status Program dot uh, org, and uh, we are putting the criteria in here just in case. Uh, you know, pretty much is what the uh, Canadian government is asking in order uh, to uh, enter to the programs. Although uh, you know, companies and incubators are independent in how they evaluate um, each of the uh, um, of of the companies that are entering. So. Uh, go to the next slide here so all designated uh, organizations by the government of canada for the startup visa program have their own way to uh, do the due diligence to make sure companies meet the requirements for the startup visa program in our case we don't have a direct way to apply to this program as is our responsibility to make sure companies have validated market and we also make sure uh, business plans would work accordingly uh, with the expectations of the government for the fast growing tech companies. Uh, the Startup Visa program is looking for technology companies that can thrive in this market. Uh, grow fast and become a part of the startup ecosystem. This requires a lot of due diligence from our side. In order for us to evaluate uh, your case, we require companies to enter into a bootcamp program so we learn uh, the, the basics of the ecosystem and uh, validate market. Uh, you will know uh, if your company will have a good uh, profile for this market and if you have a poten potential clients uh, adopting your technology or, or not. And uh, many times, I have to tell you, companies entering into the validation process realize that they, they are not necessarily in good shape to enter to Canada. Uh, this process takes about two weeks. We prepare daily workshops with coaches. Uh, we also connect the companies with volunteers in marketing and business development. And um, in order to start working uh, in, in a more international business plan. And this is why we don't require to see your business plan in this first stage. Uh, on, we are working with you, uh, this tool, uh, making sure that you have uh, done the right research uh, for your company, basically. So, 
So once you finish the first step, uh, we usually, um, we usually, uh, then usually companies evaluate themselves is the, uh, if the next step makes sense for them. In this case, if a soft landing program may be a good option for a start entering the market. Our soft landing program is a market entry strategy where companies are preparing to launch uh, in the uh, ecosystem. In this phase, company will put together a strategy to start looking for the first clients in um, or create a pilot project, something that help them to validate further and make sure that they have the right marketing strategy. Living in Toronto uh, for three more three months uh, also give them the idea if this is the right place to immigrate for any of the co-founders that are pursuing growing the company at the same time they are living in the country. We expect companies uh, will be at the end of the program uh, pitching uh, their solution to our community, you know, the tech community in Toronto and also pitch the board of directors of LATAM startups. Some of the board of directors are volunteering to review cases in this stage, and they will be the ultimate, <clears throat> sorry, point to, uh, to accept your company into an accelerator program, which gives them the supporting letter for the startup visa program. So Bain said this, uh, uh, that you're, you must consider that if the board of directors rejects your application, it's because you didn't fulfill the expectations of the board uh, that your business will be growing in the market. Uh, you may be facing um, too many challenges or uh, you may need to mature even further your business. Um, since 2019, 11 companies have applied uh, in our program for the startup visa program. And in this uh, phase, um, nine companies uh, have been accepted by the board of directors of LATAM startups. Companies that are rejected are welcome to reapply for the next cohort if they would like to do so. So consider also uh, the startup visa program is not a way to immigrate to Canada. We take a good care of the companies uh, that would like to um, grow in the economy. And as a consequence, they require to have the founder of maximum uh, five founders to reside in the country. But we take seriously case by case. Um, this is an acceleration program and this is a third phase uh, where we are help, help, helping uh, companies actively looking to grow in sales and generate traction in North America. As uh, well, looking for funding, uh, which is not only angel, in, angel investment, uh, but also grants and loans uh, in the market. And this last program, the first uh, phase of the program, lasts uh, for four months and continue in a monitoring basis for about one year. So, sorry, one second here. So each of the three phases has a cost related. We are a nonprofit organization, reason why we don't take equity from the companies and these payments go exactly to cover expenses in regards of uh, staff, uh, training volunteers, coaching, uh, in, some case, uh, in, in some cases space, and all other, uh, all other type of uh, costs related to deliver properly uh, the program. Uh, Paying by phases uh, also help the companies to save money uh, and, and time. You know, being, uh, being honest with you, that's one of the biggest uh, savings that companies have. If co-founders uh, figure it out in any of the phases that this is not the right time to enter to the market, if you pay directly to the startup visa program, then you may find later that your company was not ready or um, you or any of your team members and families were not ready to immigrate. This affects uh, the process of any of the co-founders that decide later uh, that this is not um, ready to, they are not ready to come to Canada and will affect directly the application uh, for, for the other co-founders. So getting a potential uh, rejection from the government for the permanent residence can be a problem for those co-founders that are coming into the 
that I've risen. So clarifying this point here is that, you know, making it in phases, uh, we'll, uh, we will make sure, and you guys also will make sure, that, uh, you know, all the co-founders agree to come to Canada. This is very uh, a key fact in order to uh, have the, the right people come into the country. If any of the co-founders that wanted to come here to Canada decide later after the process that they don't want to come here, this can come into a rejection from the government. And this is something that we certainly want to avoid uh, for any company. So the criteria to enter to our programs is that, uh, you know, the company has to be a technology company with intellectual property. Intellectual property in this process uh, is, is, is fine, you know, but you require to have uh, this ready by the time that uh, you apply for the startup visa program. It's part uh, of the requirements uh, to give the supporting letter. Uh, for our Spanish or Portuguese speakers, please notice startup doesn't mean necessary emprendimiento, means to have uh, something in, uh, in tech with a component of innovation and disruption. You cannot be working just uh, over a third uh, software. This is, um, this is a comment I'm making because we see a lot of cases uh, in where technology companies are working over a third software and they are no coding themselves. They, they, they don't own the code. And when you don't own the code, you don't have intellectual property over you know, what you're building. So uh, that's why I'm, I'm pointing out this because there are too many cases in that uh, regards. So uh, financial stability is the other one uh, that is important. Uh, companies coming to our cohorts pay uh, for each phase as they are advancing in the program. This payment is minimum compared with the payments related with accommodation and flights, uh, which of course are not included into uh, the cost of the program. So take in consideration what we, we don't want your company to go broken just because you become part of one of the uh, cohorts. You must be financially ready to take this step. And uh, Toronto as a city, it's a very expensive city and even Canada, you know, for many companies is an expensive uh, country. So um, we take in consideration that uh, your company have the financial sources to come to the country. Uh, we also would like to see coachable teams. We're looking for people that can take advice from our coaches and make the necessary changes to enter to this market. 92% uh, uh, of the companies entering into our programs change their business model. We have been able to help 80 companies since 2017. Uh, also companies or co-founders are, uh, you know, at least some of them, not all of them, but some of them are willing to relocate. So you will have to close your business and you don't have to close your business in your country in order to come to Canada and expand in North America. But one of, uh, of some of the co-founders may need to relocate in Canada in order to grow effectively your company. Working remotely, especially in phase two or three, sometimes it's very difficult for the third phase, which is a startup program, Definitely, it's not possible for the third phase. The company has, the co-founders has have to be here. Even under COVID-19, we require to uh, to have here uh, some experience in the ecosystem and decide to uh, logically if this is a good environment for you. Um, your co-founders and families. Um, some people don't adapt to this country as fast as, uh, as you may think. <laughs> Immigrate is a serious and complicated process, uh, so we don't take it uh, lightly. That's, that's important for you to know. And we have an immigration lawyer, which is partner with us, and that will explain better the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, this particular part in, in, the, in the next few minutes when, when I name him. Uh, so, so in summary, there are uh, steps that you need to take. Uh, if you match the criteria, apply for the Scala Bootcamp. We evaluate all applications and we respond to all with a, an acceptance or not, and with a feedback. And uh, we see your company as a potential, if we see your company as a potential, then you will be requested to join a conference call to learn more about your business. In that interview, we decide whether or not you will be a good candidate for, for the program. Uh, 
in, if we select you, uh, we'll send you an acceptance letter that includes an invitation to apply for a business visitor visa. Um, for now, you don't require any other visa to, uh, to come into um, the program. You are responsible to present the right documentation to the embassy. If you missed any important documents, the embassy may reject your application. So please consider carefully at this point as the embassy will also evaluate uh, your financial stability. Um, once, um, once you join the program, a volunteer will be selected and trained for you. And this person will help you uh, for about 10 hours a week for two weeks uh, of the program. Now, uh, complete as much as possible uh, your business plan, one pager and deck. Nobody completes these steps in the first two weeks. That's, um, you know, our experience uh, never happened. And, uh, but the intention is to start the process. And companies uh, finish the, uh, finishing the bootcamp program will decide along with LATAM startups staff is if, if you know, they should continue to the second stage uh, of the program. A designated desk will be provided at OCE. This is the Ontario Center of Excellence. Uh, we are, you know, in the same space uh, of the government of Ontario. And that provides us that that provides us support for incubators, accelerators, and startups. So we are located in the core of downtown Toronto, just a block from uh, the CN Tower. Uh, volunteers uh, may work uh, may continue working for the second uh, phase um, until complete three months of the program, which is the market entry program, and launch a Canadian corporation. And once in the program, the program finished, that second pro program finished, uh, you will be eligible to apply for the startup visa program in our incubator. You will have to pitch our board of directors and they will have the final decision over who gets selected into uh, the accelerator program, which is the startup visa program. Um, if accepted uh, into the startup visa program, you will be receiving a new agenda to continue working, uh, your sales and funding, uh, you know, funding uh, process in the market. We create milestones for each of the cases uh, that, that are in the market. You will receive a letter of support from Latin startups. Uh, you will be re required to uh, create your own team. Um, by this time, many companies either hire the volunteers or they get a, a new team members. So we send the supporting letter, uh, the, the letter of support along with the agreement, uh, you know, to the government of Canada. But the process of the visa is up to you. The letter of support will help you with uh, getting a work permit uh, initially to start working in Canada. This is extended to any essential members of your business that are also part of the startup visa program and required to be here in order to grow your company. Uh, getting your uh, permanent residence, uh, please notice that the letter of support is just one of four requirements that you need to meet in order to get uh, your permanent residence. If you lack any of those requirements, your visa may be rejected too. So you cannot depend just on the letter of support. Um, the government will do their due diligence and we will evaluate your case and um, uh, financial stability as well. So please notice that the government is expecting you to be an innovative company to create jobs in Canada and to com a comp competing global uh, basis. So that means that your, uh, your company must be really scalable. So that's, that's why we do all this process because we can provide a case for the government. So uh, you have to meet re other requirements from the government that are more related with, uh, you know, if you have a qualified business, uh, get the letter of support from a designated organization, which is, uh, you know, uh, our case, meet the language requirements and bring enough money uh, to settle in Canada. That's why our requirements are pretty much what the government is requiring, uh, you know, in, in this case. Um, okay. So we currently are receiving applications for the next cohort of startups in September, but we have to say we have a long waiting list uh, since the beginning of the year. 
This is why we have an open option for companies that would like to come uh, part of the new bootcamp in June. So just to clarify, our next cohort is in September, but we have opened the small bootcamp in June for those that potentially uh, want to take that one. So, and, and that's because we have too many applications and uh, at this point we cannot receive too many companies into, uh, you know, the bootcamp in September is, is with a big waiting list. So if conditions are good to travel, uh, we'll receive you uh, at our office. But if, uh, you know, rules will, will depend of what the government will deal uh, today with COVID-19. So the last cohort, for example, we still are running uh, the cohort online. So that's possible. We um, take care of case by case, because our companies that may be able to come here to Canada, there are some others, because of their restrictions in their own countries or the restrictions here may not be able to come to Canada. So if you go to our website, uh, you will see a link to our cost um, application. You can fi fill out the form in there and then you will see, uh, you know, um, we, we usually respond in two, three days, uh, you know, if uh, your application has been accepted or not. And again, uh, we'll come into an interview if, uh, you know, you have a potential to enter to that first phase. Um, so for those that are not ready for the bootcamp, but still want to look at the future uh, of incorporation or immigration, we have a day online bootcamp with a minimum information. So uh, you need to, uh, how you incorporate, how you immigrate, you know, other options uh, in immigration and let you know also about angel investment in the country. So you can register, you know, in uh, a link we are going to provide uh, for Canada 101 in case that your company is not ready to come to Canada. This is a good first step to do it. Um, so I'd like to pass the word to our lawyer, Blaine uh, Kumar, from Bright Immigration, so he can explain a bit better the process. Uh, once people receive the supporting letter, how they process the work permit and permanent residence and timing and other details. So uh, Blaine, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Hi, awesome. Man. Hi, Blaine. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good, Blaine. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. So I pass the word to you. Yeah, no worries. Um, hello, everyone. Hope everyone is uh, well and safe uh, in the respective countries. Uh, my name is Blaine Kumar. I'm the CEO of Bright Immigration. And as Miriam introduced uh, introduced you to everyone, um, that you know we help with uh, all immigration matters Canadian. Now, particularly, we're here today to discuss the Startup Visa Program, which um, I'm familiar with the way LATAM runs the boot camps and the, the process. And I think they did a wonderful job in terms of really preparing companies uh, who are want to enter the Canadian market space to make sure that they have uh, business models verified. So essentially from the startup, from the letter of support stage, which is where LATAM, you know, as Mary mentions, goes through your business, checks the validity and see if it, um, if it measures up to their expectations. Once you have the letter of support, that gives you really the big key for this program. Um, what, one option you do have available is you could get a work permit that would allow you to work full time within your company. Okay. It is going to be a named work permit, so it's not going to be an open work permit. Um, however, uh, it goes to show that your spouse, so for those who are married or have common law partners, they will be entitled to an open work permit. So they will be able to work freely, um, you, know, uh, you know, for uh, pretty much any occupation that they wish to go to. So that's one plus side with the work permit. Now, typically, um, you know, just a heads up that we do not uh, advise on education or school or healthcare and things like that. But when you have a work permit, um, usually those doors open up. So, you know, if you have younger children, they could be able to typically go to school. Um, and and your sp and you could also get access to healthcare once you meet that criteria, so that takes care of the work permit side. Then you have your permanent residence. As Mary mentioned throughout the presentation, if you have co-founders and they wish to immigrate to Canada as well, then all co-founders must be applied on a single application. It's not a each person submits their own application, but there is one letter of support, and that letter of support typically has a six-month expiration period. 
when we submit the, uh, the, the, the application for a startup visa, we usually submit all the co-founders together. Um, and at the same token, if one person is found, let's say you had a co-founders of three, and one person is found to have maybe a medical issue that makes them inadmissible, meaning they cannot legally um, obtain permanent residence to Canada, then everyone will be disqualified. That same thing goes for criminal records, drinking and driving um, is also one thing that we see come up quite often. Um, <clears throat> so that's one area as well. And in addition, Mary mentioned the language has to be met by all founders, co-founders. So a CLB5, which is a Canadian language benchmark, that's what it means, a five is required or higher. Um, so those are the main things. Now, on top of all of that, um, how you, how you um, basically develop your company and structure your company, your Canadian company, is also going, may play a role for some people. And what I mean by that is the government requires that the co-founders or co-founder has at least 50% of the company's share. Um, and if you have more than one co-founder, that each person at least makes up 10%. So really, they allow five spots, each one is allowed 10%, well then you have 50%. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind as well. I know many of you in your startup phases, you may want to go raise money, you may need to bring in outside investment, but you, you want to play, you want to be mindful to the, to the equity share. So another great reason why Latam is a great partner to work, work with, um, in the sense that, you know, they're not here taking any equity from your stake, which gives you the flexibility uh, if you need to, to go get financing and sell your equity shares and still qualify for immigration. Now, there is other immigration programs we could touch into, but this is the one that's most directed and most specific to LATAM startups and to the startup visa program. It is, it is honestly one of the best programs out there if you could get in and get a letter of support. Processing times are between 12 to 16 months, but many times it's been just a few months. Um, so, you know, that's something we could get more into as we discuss um, if you decide to join the one-on-one -on -one program in, later in June. Um, we could get into the more nitty-gritty facts about how you could. And I highly recommend that anyone interested in coming to Canada under a business stream or startup visa to definitely consider signing up for that program as well. Um, that's all I have to share. I know we're not doing a lot of, I don't know if we're doing answers or questions or answers, but I think that gives everyone a synopsis and, and important, basically the largest takeaway I will give to everyone is make sure you strategize um, throughout the whole period. I know everyone's doing the research now, which is great, but you know, immigration has a lot of strategy. As I mentioned, how much equity in companies, that's just one element. Um, and also who you're going to have as co-founders and all that play a role. So that's all I have to share with you. Hopefully we can connect again um, in less than a, in a month, just about a month. Um, I wish everyone well. Please be safe out there and hopefully I have the opportunity to meet you someday. Yeah, so Blaine, if you kind of stay a little bit longer, uh, we are going to accept questions right now. Uh, sure. from, yes, from I, people. I actually have one question for, uh, for Blaine. Mm -hmm. um, Julian Rojas is asking, do the co-founders moving to Canada need at least 50% of the voting rights of the company? Yes, they do. Um, basically, all of the applicants involved must have at least 50% of the company. So just to, just to reiterate that, if you have five co-founders and each person has 10%, then you're good because collectively it's 50%. Okay, um, but if one person has five percent, another person has fifteen, etc., then the person with five percent wouldn't qualify because you need to have ten percent. Okay, um, just a heads up, folks. Immigration Canada. It's uh, I always explain to clients: financial crime, financial fraud is here. Immigration fraud is right underneath. So they, this is why they have a lot of these things in place. It's not for the fraud factor, but to make sure that the manipulation isn't necessarily there. So whereas you could have one person with one ten percent come, and then they could offer to sell, you know, ten percent shares to the company, and so th this is the way the government tries to control some of those elements. Thank you. So there is another question from Alex V. He's asking: Does uh, a startup visa has an expiration date? The startup visa on the letter of support that's provided, you have six months to submit your application. Um, so to answer your question, there is a deadline of six months to submit your application. Once it's submitted, you're okay. 
Okay, and the next one that they they send the application later, and that that becomes a pro a problem if it ex, you know exceed the six months. Thank you so much, Blaine. Yeah, we had we had some clients that were really really good at starting their business that they forgot to did not forgot, but they didn't prioritize the the permanent resident application. So yes, but you want to avoid that, just get it out, get it submitted, and then continue on your journey. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's another one, it says, uh, what are the top reasons for getting rejected by the government? The main reason that we've seen is something I think LATAM does a great job in protecting, which is um, the peer review process. So um, once, again, there's, it, it's not a lot of requirements. It's language, medical, um, criminality, letter of support. Um, that's it. You know, you could have no education, you could still qualify as long as you have the baseline English and those items. But what happens is throughout the process, if the immigration officer feels that they want a second opinion, essentially, they will send it to something called a peer review. Peer review is a business model will then get sent to another um, a recognized body and they will assess it. And then they will basically, um, LATAM will have to also defend the business plan and the business ideas. So long story short, that is probably one of the greatest areas. Sorry, this is one of the greatest areas of weaknesses. I think LATAM, throughout the whole preparation, the journey that they take you on, definitely um, uh, pro prohibits that. And that's why I think a lot of the startups, you know, besides the COVID situation, has experienced fast approvals. Because once you don't hit that, co from my experience so far, that peer review, once you don't get into that peer review pile, then your applications move quite quickly. Thank you. So uh, how long does it take to get the work permit and PR after the submission? So PR, um, so PR, the website says 12 to 16 months. And I, I, my, my understanding and what we've seen is that that has a lot to do with the peer review process. So if a peer review is required, that's when it takes, could take that long. Um, but from our experience, it's been, you know, four months, three months, five months. Um, that we've been seeing, with the exception of COVID. COVID slowed down quite a bit of things because of by, uh, certain steps you need to take isn't available. Like medicals, you, it's very hard to get nowadays, etc. With the work permit, that depends on the country you're from. Um, so depending on the country you're from, that will fall into the processing times in those countries. Yeah, and this is uh, this is one thing that I want to clarify. You know, the time frame of approval, uh, work permits or permanent resident doesn't depend on the lawyer or the incubator. This is depends on the government process, and or sometimes depends on your <coughs> process in, in your country. Now, um, just uh, just to give you an idea, the uh, companies that have been with us. Uh, some of them, uh, you know, um, was a guy who got the permanent residence in two months and a half. That was exceptional uh, that he got it in, in such a short time. We have seen cases six to eight months uh, in other incubators, and we have seen up to 18 months to get permanent residence. So there is a really a variety of, 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 you know, timing in this. And for work permit, uh, the la the probably the longest time period we have seen is uh, is about. Uh, six weeks uh, for for a for a work permit so far in our cases. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, can we apply while being in Canada on their visit or a study visa? Um, yes, you can. Um, we actually had a client that we had it, but we had to get it. The answer is yes, you can. What is the cost of the star visa? Um, I guess, um, you know, submission? Yeah, so um, I think I, I could see the questions as well, Perla. Um, so Carlos, so I guess what we could do is we could share the email and you guys could email me this. Um, but we do have a very special pricing for LATAM startups. So, um, you know, rest assured our pricing is quite fair. So um, I could definitely share that, I, I believe it's Silvino. Um, so we could send that off. And I think one of the last questions is from Arman, um, Miriam. Uh, will LATAM take an equity stake in the business as required under the IRCC requirements from the business to be 
the mean uh, qualifying business? In the qualifying, yes. So no, we don't we don't take equity or, no, over equity. startups because we are non-profit incubator. Yeah. So uh, I just uh, need to um, maybe clarify here. There are uh, three types of uh, designated organizations uh, from the uh, Canadian government. One is uh, um, venture capital and angel investment firms is the second one and then incubators and accelerators now uh, angel investors and venture capitals they require to give an intent uh, um, a letter of intention to uh funding the companies between two hundred thousand dollars up to uh sorry uh seventy five thousand dollars up to two hundred thousand dollars depending of the organization uh and they require to take equity but incubators and accelerators, because most of us are non-profit, we don't require to take equity. Okay. Um, Can I ask a follow-up question, if possible, please? Yes, sure. Okay, so so I understand I understand that Latam does not take any equity stake in the company. How does a company overcome the obstacle that is required by IRCC then? There is no obstacle with that. Thing. So my my understanding, my interpretation of what what what's what's written in the in the immigration website is that a designated organization will have to take at least a, a one percent equity stake that combined with you know the number of the number of applicants adds up to more than fifty percent. So the question that I have is, I guess, what happens to the equity stake that needs to be combined with that of uh, the applicants? Uh, for incubators and accelerators, there is no mandatory that we take equity over the uh, um, startups, just because nonprofit organizations cannot, cannot do it. And more than 80% of incubators and accelerators in Canada are nonprofit. Uh, so okay. we have presented uh, in the past uh, cases. For none of the cases, we needed to take equity because it's, um, I, I know where you come from because this is kind of not super clear in the, um, in the, uh, in the process for the startup visa program because they are, they are putting this for, uh, for uh, angel investment and venture capital firms. Uh, but it's not required for the incubators and accelerators that are non-profit. Okay, so just to clarify, if I may, uh, so if, if, if an individual is applying through the startup program and chooses the incubator path and receives a letter of support, then do they, I mean, do they, do they still require to, make, to have that, re, to, to sort no. of satisfy that requirement in order for the business to be a qualifying business or not? No, they don't need to. If it's the incubator or accelerator oh. program. So like DMs, like, you know, all the other incubators, they're usually non-for-profit as, as Miriam mentioned, or the mm -hmm. back by the university, for example, where they don't take an equity share. Um, so no, that wouldn't be the case. But angel investors, for example, typically that's a seventy-five thousand dollars threshold. VCs as well, where it's a monetary exchange for equity, then the government wants to see that. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much. No problem. Um, go ahead, Pro. Yeah. Um, uh, one person or one co-founder can own the hundred percent of the shares and yes. apply for the yeah. visa. Yes, they can. Is there any financial requirements for the work for the work permit on the company? The financial requirements for the company for the PR side, there is there's a minimum uh, financial requirement that's required for the work permit. Not necessarily a financial requirement, but the government wants to see how are you going to sustain yourself, um, how are you going to be able to afford being in Toronto or wherever you're going to be, et cetera, et cetera. So there isn't a formal requirement, but that's something that's typically required in supporting documents for that work permit. If uh, somebody has an intercompany transfer work visa, can I apply for the startup visa? Um, the startup visa program is separate from that. So if LATAM if Latam's willing to take you or any incubator or VC or angel investor is willing to take you on, then yes, that's two separate cases. But you may you may want to try to you may want to reach out to us because because you do have that intercompany transfer work permit there may be PR options available to you now there might there might be. Uh, there is a 
few, uh, couple of questions about um, when families move to Canada, uh, do they get uh, free education for their children? So as I mentioned earlier, it's not within our scope to advise or to, to give me give you concrete answers to that, but I could tell you what we've seen or heard. And please, you know, again, this isn't, please don't say Blaine Kumar told me this, um, do your own research, but especially children in the high school age or any age of under 18 um, elementary, when someone has a work permit, typically the province, each province, Ontario, um, Alberta, each province has their own policies behind education and healthcare. Um, but typically, when you have a work permit, you could have access to those services. Sometimes they may require for healthcare, they may require you to be, have a, a job offer. Sometimes they may require you to be here for six months. Again, so that's why I'm advising you, please do your own research. But to answer that question in a nutshell and quickly, yes, there's typically services available to you. Um. Now, keep in mind, that's with the work permit, okay? So if you didn't get the work permit and you applied for PR, in between that time, there's nothing, there's typically nothing available to you. Again, do your own research. But with the work permit, that's a good way to bridge the gap there. But just bear in mind, when you have a work permit, the government expects you to be working on your business ideas as well. So when you have your work permit, make sure that, you know, that you are following through with the execution of your business plans. The, the work permit they will uh, get is an open or a closed work permit? It will be a for the applicant, the co-founder essentially, usually it's a closed work permit, <laughs> so it's closed to that company. So ABC Startup, that will be ABC Startup listed on there, and they usually someone has a job title. Um, the spouse of that person could typically get an open work permit, so they could work anywhere. Okay, um, I think we have questions from the first email, remember? Yes, I have a few questions. This is more than uh, for like LATAM. So what are the state, uh, what is the should the company to be accepted uh, by LATAM startup program? Uh, does it need to be incorporated or be selling? and working? Uh, the ideal case for us is that the company locally uh, in their own country is already, uh, you know, with some traction. That means that they either have some customers or they already have some users or they already got some investment. Again, um, it's important that you have validation in those countries. Uh, we have uh, made some ex exceptions in the past when the company is in uh, green tech, clean tech or biotechnology just because uh, you know those type of uh, technologies are more um, they have a, a, a long cycle uh, to get uh, to commercialization so that's why sometimes uh, you know we we take consideration if it's is a good ideation process for those type those type of companies then we take it uh, but other than that you know I think the, the, uh, usually the companies have some revenue already and they have proven market locally uh, yeah, to deepen in that, um, many people has been, uh, are been asking about uh, if they can apply before to have the company or uh, can we work from idea or they can structure the company alongside the program. Again, if the company, uh, you know, if the person uh, has a project in green tech, clean tech or biotechnology, we may take it from ideation. There are case by case that, uh, you know, is acceptable uh, as far as they also have the financial support uh, to do the process. And, uh, you know, if they are in those specific sectors, if they are in other sectors that are more, um, you know, uh, it's easier probably to, commercial, to, to go to commercialization, then uh, we will uh, ask you uh, to go and have some traction first before you apply uh, to the program because uh, you know you can probably uh, prove your concept locally first before you actually come into a more mature uh, country uh, you know and market so uh, that's that's why we usually require that the company has some traction and talking about that if the company already exists in their country can they spin off a new solution to be incubated in Canada 
Uh, certainly, uh, they can. And uh, we have seen a lot of, of those cases uh, when they apply to the program. Sometimes it's because they are coming with a spin-off uh, to Canada. And just to give you an idea of what type of companies come into the program, there are companies that they already are in $250,000 uh, a year in revenue, up to $9 million a year in revenue. Uh, so, you know, there is a lot of various uh, companies that uh, we have into the program. Uh, so some of them have been in the market for two or three years. Some of them have been in the market for 15 years. And what they are uh, bringing up is an, a spin-off. Perfect. Uh, what kind of product or industry the company must be uh, to be eligible or attractive to be incubated? Uh, since uh, it's technology and it has intellectual, intellectual property, uh, we can uh, receive uh, most of the companies. We don't work creative industries, uh, meaning that, you know, usually what is um, video gaming or, uh, you know, graphic design or things like that is, uh, related with TV or, um, uh, you know, film production. Uh, those, those are difficult cases, very difficult to uh, scale up. Um, at least they have a component of, uh, you know, artificial intelligence or virtual reality. But other than that, we receive most of the companies that are in technology. Perfect. Um, there is a question about can we create or participate in more than one company or two attending just one course? Unfortunately not. Uh, you have to come with one company uh, because it's already very difficult to focus in one company. <laughs> like uh, we have seen that in the past in some co-founders that they are like uh, two or three companies and very difficult to make them focus in, in what they need to bring here. So we, we will decide for, for one company. <laughs> okay, how and when is the selection process? Uh, well, the selection process, I already explained it, so <laughs> I'm not going to go through again that, but uh, you know, you can watch the webinar if you, if there is no uh, clarification about that, you can watch again from the beginning, but uh, you know, if you have extra questions about that, we're happy to answer by email. Okay, perfect. And uh, what are the Latin differentials and advantages? Uh, where I, I will say our biggest advantage is that we are a community of newcomers. So we understand newcomers. Uh, we are the only incubator accelerator in Canada that focus 100% in newcomers. Uh, so we understand you guys, we understand your process and many things you do uh, and why you're doing this. And we are ourselves, you know, part of our team. Most of our team is newcomers. Uh, so uh, that's our big advantage that we have done the process already, let's say, from that perspective of immigration. And uh, we have a lot of experience also creating companies here in Canada. Mm -hmm. And one of the last questions is, um, uh, who are the current Latam startups investors or angel investors? We have a network of investors that vary from, uh, you know, we are part of uh, members of uh, NACO, which is the National Angel uh, Capital Organization. This is the uh, largest uh, network in Canada of angel investors, about 3,000 angel investors in, in NACO. And we are also very close to other organizations that get it, as Keretsu, uh, you know, Keretsu is the largest angel investment uh, organization in the world. Uh, they have a chapter here in Canada, which, uh, you know, is close to uh, our community. So uh, we have different type of angels in here, but uh, I will, you know, just um, go ahead and tell you that the first thing that we focus is actual interaction in sales, because it's what angels wants to see. They, they want to see sales and traction in North America. That means not just Canada, but the U.S. as well. Uh, or, you know, as, uh, as they see the, the company progress, they, they, they will get more involved with the company. Okay. Um, uh, we have a repetitive question here. They want to know what is the reason to be rejected for the next stage, either self-landing program or a startup visa program after the bootcamp? Okay, uh, for soft landing program is less uh, less uh, less difficult. Let's say um, we'll see if the company really have an opportunity has an opportunity in the market. Uh, usually, the uh, the co-founder himself or herself will uh, decide this step or not. 
it has to be that it's too clear to us that the company doesn't have a future in Canada or North America. And if the co-founder hasn't seen it, then we will tell him or tell her. Uh, so um, it, it has been very few cases like that. Like usually the co-founder realize this is not the right time for me or my company to come here. Uh, but if it's the right the right time and the continuance of landing program uh, for the co uh, board of directors, it's very important that the company uh, present a case of uh, that uh, this is a global type of business, meaning that you know you are going to grow, respectively, uh, North America and Europe and some other places in the future. So you cannot focus just in Canada. Canada is very small, uh, you know. Um, market uh, you also have to consider if uh, you know your technology is really innovative you have intellectual property and uh, to be honest part of that is also to see if the the person is coachable um, many times we have uh, you know co-founders that uh, they want to do things that they do in their countries that it's not going to work here and we know that it's not going to work here because we have the experience before uh, so if you listen and if you uh, you know continue working your company to uh, you know to uh, to get the expectations from the government the only the only thing we are doing here is to uh, be uh, as clear and trans transparent as possible with the Canadian government that the company will have a future in, in Canada to grow. Uh, if you don't have a future in Canada to grow, the board of directors will uh, will see that immediately. So we work very hard with the teams to uh, you know to make sure that they have a good case, uh, but that depends totally on the teams. Perfect. Uh, we have uh, uh, there are a few questions about the business plan. Who writes the business plan? <laughs> well, the, the business plan is written by the co-founders uh, and uh, the volunteers are helping into, uh, you know, get, get in shape uh, for that business plan. So that means the volunteer will help you in the market research. They will help you in, uh, you know, marketing strategy, perhaps business orientation. Uh, but at the end of the day, the volunteer doesn't know about your financial situation or how you, you want to project sales or how you want to sell it or what was the history of your company. So definitely, uh, most of the business plan is prepared by the uh, co-founder, of course, with the support uh, of our uh, network coaches and volunteers, but, uh, you know, co-founders have to have um, a big role in this. Okay. I think we have covered most of the, um, most of the, yeah. most of the questions. Yeah, it has been already one hour, so uh, or it will be close to one hour. So <laughs> I guess we uh, we are good uh, to go. But guys, um, has been a pleasure to present the webinar today to you guys. And if you have more questions, please don't hesitate to send us an email. Uh, you know, but I I really asking you to please first read the information in the website because many times uh, we get questions that are already uh you know um expressing the website uh you know uh, the responses are there uh so if you read the information in there or even you see uh you know our previous webinars or you know some more information we have there i think you you will realize if the program will be a good fit for you and uh, again if not then uh you know you have the opportunity certainly uh to um uh to uh attend canada 101 uh, that is, uh, the, the webinar will actually, well, this is an, uh, a day bootcamp, basically, that will give you in detail, uh, you know, about uh, things about incorporation, immigration, then Blaine will be explaining all their options uh, to immigrate different from uh, a startup visa program, and we will be talking also about angel investment. Uh, so, um, any other questions, please uh, email us, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much and don't forget to visit our website and all the requirements. Thank you. Thanks.